If you want to skip the introduction, jump to this time code here. First thing I want to say is if you've ever used contact, uh, Native Instruments contact in a door, then you've probably inadvertently dropped two instruments on instead of one and uh, realized that the second one just doesn't play. And kind of thought to yourself, what's, th what's the point of having multi-rack instruments in contact? Well, personally, I've never really produced anything complicated enough to make it worthwhile, and I've always just put fresh instances of contact on every track, and it's worked fine. The PC that I've been using has been capable enough, and it hasn't posed any problem at all. However, it's supposed to be much better for CPU, and I have started doing it recently and realized that when you've got all those instruments contact related in just one instance, in one window, it does kind of make it nicer to play around with them and, and see what you've got in your in your track rather than having to flick to different plug-in windows on every track. So it is sort of worth doing even though it takes a bit more setup initially. Okay, so how do you set up multi-rack in contact? Well, firstly, I've got a track here with contact on it, contact 5. And the very first thing you want to do before adding any instruments is go to your view menu here and, and make sure you've got outputs enabled here. And by default, you'll probably notice that you've got the auxiliary output set up, but you need to add some stereo outputs uh, to, to allow contact to be able to sort of root audio itself and use the facility within contact to be able to do that. So just click on this plus here and add a bunch of stereo outputs. Four will do, whatever. It doesn't really matter too much as long as you've got an, enough for the number of instruments that you will want to use within here. If you want to use five instruments stacked on top of each other, you're going to need five stereo outputs to do that. Once you've done that, close down the plugin, close down your door, and restart it. I don't know why, but it requires it. Otherwise, you'll get some quirkiness later, particularly if you're using live like I am. You just, just restart the program, and I promise it will be worthwhile. Right, so the next thing, I'm going to add an instrument into here. It doesn't really matter which one. Let's just add action strikes into here as my first instrument in contact. So this is kind of the standard way of doing it, and I would expect this just to play now like standard, as standard. Which it does. Great. If I want to add a second instrument, I'm going to do that here as well. So I can minimize this, this instrument just with this button here. Just click that, and it just collapses the rack. And let's some, add some emotive strings on here as well. Now, I've added emotive strings, but if I play it, well, it's still playing the first one, isn't it? So the very ne the next thing I want to do is establish which track I'm going to want to root, emot root to emotive strings, because you know, in this case, I'm going to have track two essentially root back to contact in track one, play through that instrument, and then back sort of into track two to the output, the final output of track two. And the way I do that is... Uh, firstly, by going into contact here and setting my output. So if you click on this button here, the I button, which I assume stands for information, if I click on there, I have a choice of outputs now. And you can see that now it's set to the same output. So stereo one, stereo one. See how the setting these outputs up came in useful at this point. Uh, if, let's set this up to output to a second, to the second stereo output. So emotive strings is going to be going to stereo 2 instead, and let's collapse that one down. Now, let's go to the track where I actually want this instrument to exist, and it doesn't exist as a plugin on this track, but what you will have to add is an external instrument. So in uh, uh, Ableton Live, you'll add an external instrument, so go to instruments and just add external instrument onto here. And then you can tell it, well, the external instruments I want to use is actually Contact 5, which is in track 1. So MIDI output 2, Contact 5. And then I want to select the second track on Contact 5, the second stereo track on there. You've got that listed there, stereo track. This is actually the bit that messes up if you don't restart. And that's all you need to do in there. So MIDI output 2, Contact 5, and 2, Contact 5. And... Now, if I've done that correctly, mm. 
you can see that this is getting routed through the contact five here. and back to this track. So let's just do it again, uh, add another one onto here. In fact, just add another instrument into here. I'll collapse this one down and add some uh, evolved mutations, some tonal stuff on here. And again, we've got our record track here, our live track set to external instrument. You will probably need to name these, otherwise it'll start to get quite complicated. Uh, so go back to contact and this so now already has information enabled. Go to stereo three, enable that as stereo three, and now put the external instrument on track three. Set this to contact five, set this to three, and set this to stereo three here. And there, there it is, going through this multi-rack instrument. So now we have one track, one instance of contact, three instruments, and our first three tracks playing through those. So yeah, renaming will be important at this point, so you'll need to name this to strings and name this to, I don't know, synth or something, whatever. And there we go, you know, you can carry on carry on down or I certainly wouldn't say ad infinitum because there are limited numbers of outputs that con one instance of contact can handle is it 16 or something um so you know you can't go on forever but what I what I, as I mentioned at the start what I have realized is that this just is nice to be able to just have everything here and see all the stuff that you've got loaded in contact all in one place and change anything here. And of course it impacts just the stuff running through this track and doesn't change track one at all. So if I go put this track live again, that's still on our drums. So there we go, a quick tutorial on how to use multi-rack within contact and Ableton Live. I hope that's useful. If you've got any questions, add them in the comments. It's not something that I've got too much experience on, really. As I say, I've used, used it largely in the standard stick a new instance on every track in the past. Um, so I've sort of had a look around, figured this out, and um, thought I'd share it in a tutorial. But ask away, and I will do my best to answer. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.